In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use an ESP01 microcontroller and a read switch to read your Kromschröder gas meter electronically. Then you can send the meter readings via MQTT to your Node Red or Home Assistant. I'll tell you about the pitfalls I fell into during this process. At the end, I want to give you an outlook why monitoring is useful and how you can save a lot of heating costs and at the same time do something good for the environment. In one of my previous videos, I have shown you how you can make your water, electricity or gas meter smart with an ESP32 cam. Because the ESP32 cam can not only take pictures of the meter, but with a little machine learning it can also read it automatically and send the meter reading to your server via MQTT. Some viewers have pointed out to me that this effort would not have been necessary at all with my Kromschröder gas meter. Because this one has a place where you can attach a read switch and pick off a magnetic pulse at every zero crossing of the second decimal place. I had indeed overlooked this and since this alternative seemed to be extremely simple I decided to tinker an appropriate solution in a trice. I thought that this could hardly take more than one evening. Unfortunately, it took several evenings until it worked as expected. And that's why I want to share my findings with you. This time I decided to use an ESP01, but you can also use a D1 Mini or ESP32. And for all who are in a hurry, here is the simple circuit. All you need is a read switch and some resistors. The code can be found on GitHub and a case for your 3D printer is available on Thingiverse. As always, you can find the links in the video description. But why? At the end, it was more complicated than I thought. I only need a single GPIO, which is held low in idle state with a pull down resistor. When the magnetic pulse comes from the gas meter, the normally open read switch should close and send a high signal to the GPIO. The ESP shall then send the meter reading increased by 0.01 cubic meter to the server by Wi-Fi and MQTT. So the circuit is extremely simple and I have the feeling to be finished soon. But as it always happens, the problem started. At first I wanted to simply catch the switch state high or low in the code and in the case of a high increment the counter value as described. But I quickly found out that I get several highs per magnetic pulse. I soon found out that it's a good idea to use interrupts instead of reading the GPIO level. This means that whenever there is a signal change at the corresponding pin, an action, thus a corresponding function in the code, is executed immediately. This function is called ISR, by the way. This stands for Interrupt Service Routine, ISR. With this you can't miss a level change, for example because a delay is running and the ESP is not listening. The interrupts can be set either for rising or falling edges. For example a falling edge means that the ISR code is always executed when the level changes from high to low. As you can imagine, however, this has rather increased my problems. Now I receive double or triple pulses even more often. The background is that the read switches tend to bounce. That is, when they are open, they don't just close, but may open another time for a fraction of a second and then close a second or third time before remaining in that state. Ceramic capacitors tuned to the bounce speed can ease the problem somewhat. It can also be fixed by first detaching the interrupt in the ISR as soon as it is triggered. Then you can perform all other actions like sending the new counter reading, if necessary add a small delay and then attach the interrupt again and be ready for the next pulse. 
But unfortunately, there were not only multiple interrupts when changing from low to high, but also when changing back from high to low. As far as I understood correctly, however, this is not due to the characteristics of reed switches and may have another cause. And since the high state of my gas meter lasts for one or two seconds and sometimes even remains at high because the gas flow pauses just at the zero crossing, I received double pulse again and again, which added up with the time and led to wrong measured values. With this it was clear at the latest that interrupts are not really necessary here because I actually have enough time to read out the current state. Much more I had to make sure that the change counter value is actually permanent. And I achieved this by reading it with a loop not only once but 10 times. And this for the high as well as for the low state. Now my code was running quite solid and actually I thought I had solved the problem now. But unfortunately I had to notice that there were still double counter jumps and my measured result differed more and more from the actual counter. Debugging with an ESP01 is unfortunately not that easy because it's difficult to run it in the circuit and receive outputs on the serial console at the same time. That's why for a long time it wasn't clear to me at which point of the code the double counts were occurring, until I was able to find out that my code is miscalculating at the point where the variable for the counter value is increased by 0 0.01. So here the ESP just miscalculated every now and then. This sounds absurd first, because it is a simple calculation. But in fact my mistake was that I had defined the variable as a float. Already the Arduino page warns about precision limits. But what is the reason for this problem? It is stated here that I can store numbers between 3.4 times 10 to the power of 38 and minus 3.4 times 10 to the power of 38 with floats. But the problem is that floats only have an accuracy of 6 to 7 digits and this is for the whole sequence of digits. The decimal point is then only shifted to the correct place. But why can't computers calculate seemingly smooth numbers accurately for us? Actually, we already know the problem from the decimal system. If we try to write the number one third as a decimal number, we write for example 0.333. If we want it more exact, we write some more threes behind it. But we will never be able to write the number precisely if we don't use the trick with the periodic dash. It's the same with the binary system. With floating point numbers, the decimal places are stored in hardware as fractions to the base of 2. 2 because the transistors in our computers only know the state on or off, in other words 1 or 0. For example, the number 18.4 would have the following binary representation 10010.011001. The zeros remain without effect. So, to the left of the decimal point, we would have 2 to the power of 4 plus 2 to the power of 1. This equals 16 plus 2 equals 18. To the right of the decimal point we have 1 divided by 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 divided by 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 divided by 2 to the power of 5. So 0.5 plus 0.25 plus 0 0.015625 equals 0.39625. So we have a total of 18.390625. So even though we calculated with 11 digits plus sign, which means 12 bits, we didn't manage to map the number 18.4 exactly as a binary number. In reality, the number is stored normalized and structured in sign, significant and exponent. But this is going too far here and does not change the basic problem that apparently simple numbers cannot be represented exactly in the binary system straightforwardly. So for my code, this means by simply changing the variable to the data type double, which is a floating point number with double precision, the problem is finally solved. But I can tell you, it was a long way. 
If you like my video, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and consider making a donation. Now there was only the problem to solve that my ESP always started with a value 0.01 after power on. So to be able to send the current absolute value to the microcontroller, I set up a callback function with which I can bring the counter value to a certain starting position. But of course, I don't want to do this every time just because someone interrupts the power supply. That's why I not only receive the readout value in my note read, but I also store it there. And whenever the ESP sends only a 0.01, I know that it has been reset. In this case, note read can return the last known counter reading to the ESP, so it will continue to run on that basis again. In case of longer power failures, this will also lead to deviations, but they should be within limits. All in all, my solution now runs reliably. Compared to the machine learning based ESP32 CAM solution shown in the earlier video, my new tinkering provides a smoother curve. However, at longer intervals and especially after power failures, it makes sense to recorrect the current absolute value, which was not necessary with the CAM solution. On the other hand, the reference image occasionally had to be realigned if someone had moved the house too much. Of course, the question still arises whether or for what purpose the effort is worthwhile. My records now cover more than half a year. In my opinion, the effect of optimizations on the heating system can only be judged reasonably if you see after a few days how the changes are reflected in the consumption. So you can see directly what happens if you lower the hot water temperature by a few degrees since you scald your hands on it anyway. And whether you need hot water water 24 hours a day or only in the morning for example can be read off in euros after a short time. In view of the rising gas and oil prices it is anyway a good idea to examine whether the own heating system is optimally adjusted. In our house for example no hydraulic balancing was carried out. That is actually mandatory in our country but is often forgotten. This alone saved me over 20% in heating costs. You can easily find out whether this is also the case in your house. My radiator valves, which are located under the thermostat, were all still in the manufacturer's default setting. During hydraulic balancing, these valves are adjusted according to the demand so that all radiators in the house are heated evenly. This allows the temperature in the heating system to be lowered to the minimum required, which saves money. I plan to make a video on this topic soon. I hope my shown solution will help you to avoid the pitfalls at least in the topic of monitorings. Write me in the comments what you would have done differently and if you are interested in the topic hydraulic balancing. And with that, it only remains for me to say, have fun with tinkering and see you next time. I would like to thank Venkat and Rodrigo for their donations. I appreciate it very much.